I share my screen. And we go to South Tyrol. This paper aims at presenting a first survey of the Cantus Fractus repertory in the medieval mi liturgical music musical sources from South Tyrol, a region in northern Italy at the border with Austria. Nowadays, South Tyrol is a trilingual region. People speak German, Italian, and a minority, Latin. The South Tyrolian culture is basically Germanic, with influences coming from the Latin Italian South. The latter became stronger after the First World War, when the region formerly belonging to Austro-Hungarian Kingdom was annexed to Italy. In the Middle Ages, the territory was divided into three, into three dioceses, owning to three different ecclesiastical provinces. The central part of the region, with the city of Bolzano Bozen, belonged to the Diocese of Trento, the oriental part, with Merano Meran, to the Diocese of Coira Quo in Switzerland, and the western part to the Diocese of Presanone Brixen. The presence of an important diocesan seat in the region, such as Bressanone, exerted a strong influence on the surrounding territory. South Tyrol preserved a large number of musical liturgical sources. Until a few years ago, most of the Cantus Planus and Cantus Fractus sources found in South Tyrol had never been cataloged or indexed, lying unknown in various archives and libraries of the region. The research project carried out in the last 12 years by the University of Bolzano brought to light a considerable corpus of both manuscript and printed sources of great in interest. In the recent catalog dedicated to the liturgical musical manuscripts preserved in Bolzano and Bressanone, dating back to the 11th up to 19th centuries, the Liturgische Musikanschrift in Bozen und Brixen, published last year, I described 20 medieval manuscripts out of a total of 101 volumes. Moreover, some medieval sources can be found in other monastic and religious centers of South Tyrol, such as Novacella Neustift near Bressanone. Six of the medieval manuscripts contain some significant examples of Cantus Fractus. These are gradual curials of the 15th century written in the so-called Gotische Choral Notation. In many cases, the Cantus Fractus composition do not belong to the main layer of the manuscript, but are added by a later hand in the last folios. Today, I present three, this composition and the sources in which they are contained. The presentation we consider at first composition with a clear explicit rhythmic notation, the Cantus Fractus composition, then composition with some traces of rhythmic notation, it can be interpreted as indication of a rhythmic proportional execution. And finally, composition with no rhythmic or mensural notation, but with a strong rhythmic character in the text, which can be, in my opinion, convincingly performed in a rhythmic proportional way. The first category includes composition for the ordinarium and for the problem of the mass. For the Ordinarium, we can find seven different melodies for the Credo and one for the Gloria. The Cantus Fractus Credo are contained in four manuscripts. The first I like to show is a gradual curial from the archive of, the sm of a small village, Pieve di Barembe, Enneberg, in German, Pli de Mareo, in Latin, dating to the second half of the 15th century. The manuscript was probably written for the nearby church of San Vigilio di Marebbe, a charming village in the Dolomites, in the Latin Valbadia. Here is the village and the church. The provenance of the manuscript can be deduced from the presence of the office and the mass for Saint Vigilius, adorned with a large initial watermarked in red and blue. The manuscript contains music for the major feasts of the liturgical year and for the saints venerated in the local churches, as many other 15th century manuscripts preserved in South Tyrolean libraries and archives, written for and used in little diocesan churches. On the last folios of the San Vigilio manuscript, 
There are two great and counted practice added by a later hand. The first in white and the second in black notation. More peculiar is the case of another credo attested into imposing 15 century gradas from Bessanone and from Tyson Pisido in the Pusseria Valley. This credo is not included in Miazga's repertory. In the Bressanone manuscript, it is added by a later hand. In the second one, it is part of the main layer. This is added, and this is the manuscript with the credo. But unfortunately, the folios were cut and the credo is incomplete. The first part of the incipit of this credo corresponds with some small variation to Miazka 113, a credo that is also present in many gradas in the South Germanic dioceses. But then the melody continues differently. Therefore, we cannot exclude that it represents a local melody. In another gradual curial antiphonary dated 1495 from Novacella, there is a second credo melody not recorded in Miazga. Both credo could be local compositions. However, the most frequent recording composition with written notation in South Tyrolean medieval manuscripts is the famous trope Gloria Spiritus et Alme for the solemn feast of the Beata Virgo in the version Bosse 49. In fact, it appears in three different manuscripts. Like the previous ones, they date back to the 15th century. In two manuscripts, here's the third, first, the Gloria was added at the end of the Codex, and only in the Novacella volume, it is integrated in the Curiale. Here's the second manuscript with the addition, and then Novacella. This could suggest that this Gloria arrived relatively late in South Tyrol. In the Novacella manuscript, the scribe uses red stems for the minimum. The rubrics give indication for the execution of the Gloria. The trope was sung by the Fueri, the canonical text of the Gloria by the Chorus, as in many Germanic sources. On this aspect, you can see both the repertory and the monography of Bernard Schmidt on the Gloria Spiritus et Alme. In the mass section that follow these Glorias, other elements of interest appear. The first of them is the trope O Maria Celi Via for the Alleluia Ave Benedicta Maria, to which I will return shortly. The second element of interest is the sequence verbum bonum, which presents here the ornate melody typical for the German area and in the notation, the characteristic two puncta on the second syllable. Although the notation contains only traces of rhythm, the double punctum or the double note on the second syllable, its execution on a short long pattern, as indicated in the, by the incipit, is more than plausible. The solution was suggested also by Marco Gozzi in a recent article. In this rhythmical version, even the melismas, an important element to consider in the reconstruction of the rhythmic profile of similar sequences and repertoires, as Marco Gozzi highlighted in his writings, are distributed, to, sorry, are distributed with great balance in the rhythmic flow. The melody proceeds harmoniously without sudden slowdowns or accelerations, which would be achieved by adopting other rhythmic solutions, such as isochronia or isosyllabism, but also with an opposite long short rhythmic pattern. I tried to sing as a, these sequences with this pattern short long. Verbum bonum et suave persone mus illudave per quod Christi fit conclave virgo mater filia. The long short rhythmic pattern, the opposite, is used and clearly notated in the above mentioned trope O Maria Celivia, in the version that appear in the manuscript F7 from Bressanone. The trope in red is not the only case in the manuscript, as the trope Ave Virginium Corpus for the offertory sacerdotes for the Corpus Christi Mass probably a local contrafactum of the trope Ab Ac Familia, 
This is a kind of trademark for 15th century South Tyrolean liturgical sources. It's written also in red. We can suppose that the red ink indicates in these cases that the troops were sung by a distinct group of performers, maybe the Puery, as in the rhythmic Gloria Spiritus et Alme in Novacella. I'd like to put together in the same slide the two versions of the trope O Maria Celivia, the rhythmical version of the manuscript from Brunico on the left, and the normal one from Novacella right. In my opinion, we cannot exclude that the first one simply makes explicit the rhythm which is implied in the second one. Following this example, we can suppose that a large number of compositions without rhythmic notation, but with rhythmical text, could be performed with rhythm in the music as well. This is a well-known phenomenon described by theorists regarding composition with rhythmic text, such as hymns and sequences. Here are two more examples from South Tyrolean manuscripts. The first is contained in a gradual from Novacella, the so-called gradual Graduale Zollner, from the name of the main scribe, written in 1450, circa. Here you can see the beautiful library, and in the middle, the gradual, the first page, and then the trope, Mater Christi Veneranda, which is in Analecta Hymnica and also in Hoffman Brandt which is composed by Johannes from Jenstein, Archbishop of Prague, as a trope for the Eid responsory of the Matins for the Visitatio Maria. This composition appears in the Zollner Gradle into the Visitatio Mass as a trope for the Offertory Filia Regum. Here you can read the rubric. The same happens in the beautiful Posh Missal compiled in Novacella about 15 years earlier, between 15 24 and 26. In the Zollner gradual, the melody proceeds with parallel verses, like a sequence. Apparently, there is no musical affinity with the filia regum offertory, which is in G, and the trope is in F. Also in this case, given the characteristic of text and melody, it is possible, in my opinion, to transcribe the trope both in ternary or binary meters. The question of the interpretation of the melisma that follows each verse and reproposes the melody in these manuscripts remains open. So I try to sing the two possible versions. Mater Christi veneranda supleva me miseris. Then maybe a syllable, I don't know. And so on. And then the binary version. Mater Christi veneranda supleva me miseris, and so on. Similar, <clears throat> similar consideration can be made for the canciones contained in the famous co Codex 457 of ULBT Tyrone in Innsbruck, most likely coming from Novacella. The absence in many compositions of rhythmic indication in the notation leaves ample room for different rhythm solution. See, for example, the Christmas song Nascitur de Virgine, in the recording promoted by the Museum of Ferdinandum in itself, about two years ago, in the transcription made by Franz Grat, a sort of free rhythm, and the rhythmic version, two, one, two, one, as in three, proposed by Marco Gozzi in the transcription here. The latter is, in my opinion, very convincing and easier to make, uh, to make a children's core singing than the former. Nascitur de Virgine, sine viris emine, Mundo sine crimine, per solius titie, and so on. To conclude, I would like to, so, 
to show some images of South Tyrolean Franciscan manuscripts. The manuscripts prior to the 17th century, certainly used in the convents of Bolzano and Caldaro, are no longer available, except for a 16th century antiphonary described by Daniele Torelli in the Monumenta Liturgia et Cantus series. The surviving codices date back much later than the period considered in this conference, but in my opinion, they still seem worthy of interest for two reasons. They provide with information on the performance practice of some hits of the cantus practice. For example, here, the Credo Cardinalis with the organ accompaniment and C and G sharp. Patre omnipotentem, factorem celiterre, and so on. And in some other cases, I'm referring in particular to some sacre canciones, the manuscripts preserve a composition that could be much older than the manuscripts in which they are copied. For example, in the case of this cantilene. We have a lot, a lot, a lot of, the, of this composition in the Franciscan convent in Bolzano. The search of manuscripts in South Tyrol continues. For example, after many decades, the volumes of the Bresanone Cathedral have recently re-emerged from the diocesan archive. Therefore, I hope to be able to show in the future other South Tyrolian manuscripts and other examples of Cantus Fractus from South Tyrol. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Julia, very much for fascinating paper. And really, I, I, I'd love to, to go to South Tyrol, so I hope it will be possible soon. <laughs> yes. There are so many interesting sources, and even they look a little different than our sources because the notation is uh, different. Mm -hmm. There are many things which uh, look familiar, really. O Maria Celivia. This is For example, so, yes, I saw the, the, trop, the, the, the first day, you know, in the, yes, in the paper. So, and also this, this um, uh, pattern. Uh, I don't know if we have the same compositions, but the way of making them. And yes. this, yes. Uh, um, this rubrics with pueri and chorus is so fascinating. But uh, please uh, ask and comment if you wish. Uh, so there are always some, some questions in, in chat. So or there was already a discussion. Barbara Heikiglo posted that. Uh, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, sorry, I can't find it. There, ah, some of this red could represent Mary's warmth with Christ. Barbara, would you like to comment? Um, can you hear me okay? Yes. Uh, yes. This is, I have seen uh, in, for example, in manuscripts of the Low Countries, not liturgical books, uh, because there's really nothing like this that I've seen over there. But sometimes in text sources where there's a reference or in title pages where there's reference to clearly the incarnation and it's, it's written out in red. I mean, it makes sense. And one of the Credo settings we just saw, it did seem where there was alternation of black and red. The red was a text that was about the incarnation. So uh, that could be another meaning for an alternation of black with red. It's a very uh, kind of colorful way <laughs> of pointing to the incarnation. Thank you, Barbara. I think in this case, uh, the tropes in these manuscripts from Brunek, Brunico, the tropes are underlined in red ink as a red ink is for the interpolation. Yeah. Of the, yeah, chant. There is a notice from Sarah Plong. There was a Hasid community near Brussels and in Tournai. Well, uh, yeah. Sarah? Well, yeah. 
And as Barbara mentioned, Anne Emanuel Coilons wrote an article um, on the Sanctus and Agnus Dei Venu. And one of them, um, I think it's the Agnus Dei, has a trope that is related to a Hussite community in Brussels. And, in Tor and Jacques Pic also talks about this um, at length. It's, uh, yeah, so when you said, when Hannah said that there was influence of Bohemian repertory in the Low Countries, it made me think of that. But I don't know if there's a direct, I mean, I don't know, Barbara, yeah. what do you think? I, I have some of this written up in my book um, because uh, the, the whole, because the Hussite controversy was so important at Basel, it had repercussions all over, including in Belgium. For example, there were communities that were called Tabor, uh, Tabor communities. There was an increased devotion to the Transfiguration. Uh, there are even plays, uh, theater, that was about uh, the Council of Basel. So uh, this was very widespread. And also, I believe, the spirituality in, in a certain way. And it was, in fact, the spread of that, some of those ideas, that made the Council of Basel feel that the Hussite matter was, had to be dealt with. They were afraid because the ideas were spreading beyond uh, Bohemia. I think it's I'm important. sure there's more to write about this. There's yeah. more to be done in the Low Countries on this matter. Well, I feel like it. That what I read, and I can't remember. I think Anne Emanuel mentioned it, or Jacques Pic mentioned it, or I read it somewhere else. But it was the tapestry makers that were particularly devoted huh. to transfiguration, and um, there's something about. Uh, these families were prominent families in that area, and one of the tapestry makers had traveled to Prague and brought this back with him, um, some, something like that. And I can't remember if I got that in musicological scholarship or if I read that some, written by a historian somewhere, but it was interesting. Thank you, thank you. I think there are two questions in the chat I'd like to answer. Uh, yes, it is. About the, the Miazka um, manuscripts uh, from Bessanone, I know that um, all these repertories were compiled in, on the basis of the Stabline archive in archive in, in um, now in, um, in Wurzburg, I think, no, in, they, they were in Erlangen. Erlangen. In Erlangen. Um, but um, they are not complete. I mean, it's just a little, little, some, some folios from uh, two manuscripts and that's all. I mean, they are really unknown. I mean, also in these rep repertories. And uh, the second one, Nascitur de Virgine, Example with the Chorus. I don't know. I will. I will check <laughs> and uh, another text, it is a possibility. Yes, uh, when I sing this cancel with my group, we sing the, the, um, the part chorus, not soloist, but in, in three or four people. I mean, it's really an alternative between soloist and, and uh, chorus. There was a remark from Julieta. I also wanted to thank you for life examples. Because <laughs> always very important to- You're welcome. Speak. And I <laughs> like the- to Try not to sing and- And yes, and I can propose it to boys choir, whether they would like to sing it. So, Yes, I have a, uh, about the rhythmic um, reconstruction of verbum bonum. Uh, I agree, the, the signal of the double, double note on the second syllable. It, it's, Thank uh, you, Hannah. I'm most grateful to you and your colleagues for this opportunity to speak to you today. Mm -hmm. And I'll welcome your comments. Do you know mm -hmm. my... Uh, Someone is playing the... <laughs> the lecture. Linked talk. <laughs> Sorry. 
but uh, do you think that uh, this pattern pam 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 uh, it's for all uh, uh, the seconds from the beginning to, to the end uh, in the format uh, so illud ave no illud ave it's uh, i think that there is a format Ave, okay, no, 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 no. Ave. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ave, Ave. <laughs> and yeah. also yeah. for the for the yeah. melisma. So there is more time for the melisma. Yes. Yes. Thank you. And Don't in you. other in other uh, versions, there are no melisma. Yes, in the Italian one or Italian. Pam, 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 pam. Okay. But in this case, yes, we have this ornate melody. It works very well. And it works in general very well. I mean, this point uh, is maybe, yes, um, to migliorare. I have to, <laughs> to improve, to improve <laughs> this point. But I mean, in general, it works. It works very well with the melismas. This is fascinating because the melismas are in the, on the right, right places. And uh, this is interesting because uh, the longer notice, it's not uh, on the accent of the no, word. Huh? It's exactly the opposite. Yes, but the, the, the beat is on, it's, it's right. Ave. As modern, modern, as a simple, modern, yes. But I think it works anyway. And it is another way to underline the accent of the text with this short, yes. energic first note for stone verbum paru mezzo ave it's very fascinating it's very so rhythmic very yes vivace <laughs> thank you you're welcome there are some more questions concerning uh, performance practice uh, probably because uh, time is passing we could make a break and if you want you can continue informal discussion so the room is uh, is still is always open and hannah when we meet again i would say uh, let's not spread it too much so in 10 minutes i see that on my computer it's now 1642 so 1652 so that we don't have so much delay is it fine 1652 and it'll be jan uh, ziegelbauer my another dear colleague from the charles university who will uh, chair the last session so in 10 minutes, but please stay around in, with your coffee and yeah, the break is now uh, official. <laughs> Julia, I wanted, can I ask you, because we are now during the break, can you imagine that you can sing in also in this the rhythm? Uh, we have to check the melismas. I think uh, if you consider the, the southern version, this is pretty syllabic. Mm -hmm. So you can choose the rhythm you want. Also, for example, verbum bonum et suave, it fits perfectly. Yeah. But if you have this, the melisma, so you have to really to check where the melisma are mm -hmm. and to, to, to consider that you cannot sing the melisma in a too short uh, time as well in not too short values mm -hmm. and then you had the Einstein's uh, piece of poetry that was ex in exchange the syllabic part and then the melismatic part which yes. is very rare in Czech context we I, they usually skip the melismatic part which was and this how do you think that they uh, interpreted that just was it would it be split into two groups of singers or would it be yeah this I is think so this, or, this or, be an epic, right? or something like that. Because Do you think that uh, boy singers could be involved in this? Yes, because in Novacella, the, the manuscript, as a, this manuscript with red strokes, um, stems, and pueri and chorus, it was written in or for Novacella. So they have, they have, and they had, and they have a famous school. Mm -hmm. So they they used to sing a lot, a lot. And I think um, these uh, sort of performances were very uh, normal. I, I mean, 
they, they used to, to sing with this alternative of mm -hmm. different, um, yes. Because I, I wonder how much uh, soloist and chorus and so on. I wondered how much repertory what we heard today was uh, intended for children. Also, this pattern with this uh, with the cyclic melodies, which you can memorize so well, and it helps you to memorize the text as well. So I wonder how much it was used for uh, for children for just to just to for education. But I think Marco Gozzi could tell, say about it more. Maybe we will have the discussion at the end. So yes, yes. you want to have a coffee? Yes, I don't have a research project now on music sung by by Pueri or by. Oh, there is a lot much more than we can imagine. I think in my. In yeah. my Absolutely. Well, in Prague, the first uh, professional uh, group of children singers was very early. It was uh, mid 13th century. And they were very well um, provided for. It was at the Prague Cathedral, 12 boy singers, which is really very early, 1250 something. Yeah. And I think that a lot of repertory, which was, uh, was just new, it was, uh, it was all, a, a big part of the repertory was performed by these singers, in particular Marian repertory. It was their duty to perform the Marian repertory. Mm -hmm. So I wonder how much also this, this uh, phenomenon that we are do dealing with children repertory influenced also the shape of the repertory. But it is another huge question, right? Yes. So I would be very much interested uh, simple songs. This is, no? If you if you look in the not really in this official liturgical books no which are for the liturgy but in other books and so you find a lot a lot of these compositions without written they are written without written but the the text is so written that you can try and they work I mean they are much more singable <laughs> so you can sing it uh, without problems and. Um, 